Vaitu in the sugya of hating. So we mentioned yesterday the idea um, of sinas chinam, the idea of hating with shayim, and those people that are doing wrong. We basically came out that you basically have no heta to uh, hate someone that does something wrong unless you do toichecha, unless you rebuke him. And since we have no koyach to rebuke anyone, therefore we cannot hate anyone. So we have no heta really to hate anyone that's doing an avera, even if he knows it's an avera, and he's doing it specifically because we have no way of, of uh, giving him musa. Obviously, obviously, and this, I don't think this even needs to be said, but it's possible if a person is struggling in a certain area, or let's go even as far as saying that someone's gone off the derech, chas v'shalom to hate him. Forget, the only way to bring him back is to love him and accept him, again, as a person, but not necessarily his actions. You don't accept his actions, give yourself his actions, then you could be basically giving him a heter to do that. So the idea is never to hate someone that's struggling again. You know, I, I, I'm just going to mention one, one sentence that I heard from a very chosh of a rov about the inyani de yoma, the things that went on in Eretz the last two weeks. And he said one thing. He said... He struggled with his Yetzirah. How do we know that we do a better job with our Yetzirah than he did with his? You know, we're so quick to judge people. Oh, look at him! Obviously, we all have different Yetzirahs. Often we have different struggles. But how do we know that we are managing to be successful with ours in the same way that other people are not with theirs? In other words, we have to realize that, you know, everyone has their struggles. So if this guy's struggling with that, we're going to hate him because of that? What about yourself? They often say that life is like a mirror. And therefore, if you see something negative in someone else, it means that you yourself have that character trait. You know that? It's a very big aside to remember. If you notice a negative trait in somebody else, often it means you have it within you and you just don't realize it or you don't want to know about it and you don't want to talk about it or think about it. So therefore, you see it in someone else. The reason why you see it in someone else is because you have it. Okay, it's a famous story in, in, in psychology, it's a famous story in Bebe Chassid, this is for him also, that is, everything's a mirror. The way you see people is a mirror. So if you notice, by the way, by the way, just a story on the side, you know, we talk about lots of things within, you know, the sugyas. If you notice that someone has, oh, this guy really annoys me because of X, Y, Z. He really annoys me. No, you probably have the same thing. Now, you might not express it in the same way, you might not say it in the same way, you might not come out in the same way. But at the end of the day, if you're noticing something in other people, it probably means you have it. So go look into yourself. Go look deep into yourself before you go puzzle somebody else. So to hate somebody else, chas v'shalom avada, we don't do that. That's avada, 100% poshet. Now, there, are, there is a mitzvah to hate certain people. Anybody know who they are? Amalek. Okay, Amalek, cute. Girl. <laughs> Not true. Not true. You have to marry a girl one day. Now. Okay, can you imagine? You might have to marry a girl one day. Yeah, We're going to have yeah. to convince a girl to marry you one day. <laughs> Not you, Chas Shalom. Anyway, you hate Averis? Kavaldik, you're not to hate Averis. That's beautiful. Oh, Apikoris. Someone's an Apikoris. Someone that goes around spreading terrible things. Ellie, is an Apikoris. Could you just... You could, yeah, yeah. If he's an Apikoris, what's the din? We have many Ellie's in yeshivas, so nobody knows who it is. Um, yeah? We do, by the way. We have a lot. No one knows who it is. So the point is that if you have someone as an Apikoris, they say mitzvah to hate him. Why is there mitzvah to hate him? Maybe it's not a nice thing to do. That's not nice. You hate someone else. You say, yeah, come on, man. Accept him. Love him. Hug him. No. Why not? Like Nuchi said, you're going to end up accepting what he says. You're going to get involved. Chas v'shulem. Melech, are you with me? What's the what is an apikoris? So the simple definition of an apikoris is generally someone that, you know, rejects one posuk or one halacha in the Torah. That's pretty scary. You have people that are like, you know, the whole Torah is true. This halacha, I don't know about this one. I don't like this one. I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. Right? Uh-huh. Throw him off a building. Throw him off a building? Well, you need to eat him and stuff like that, but yeah. Throw him off a building with two of your friends. Rabbi let's move on. The Chavetz Chaim says a beautiful Yisoyit. The Heilig Chavetz Chaim. He says, what happens if a person does an Aveira with money? He cheats taxes. He steals from someone. Whatever it may be. He does an Aveira with money. Zuk the Heilig Chavetz Chaim. Even if you rebuke him, you're not allowed to hate him. Why is the Chavetz Chaim the greatest area that people are blinded to their own faults and they rationalize their actions is with money. 
And therefore, even if you rebuke him, and you tell him off, and he doesn't listen, you cannot hate him. Because that is the greatest area that people fool themselves into rationalization. It's okay, he doesn't mind, it's not going to harm anyone, he's not going to know the difference. You know all these people, right? If I, if I, if I copy that, that program, you think the company really know. You think it makes a difference. You know, if I do that, you think it makes... We can never make these rationalizations, but we do sometimes. But that's what we have to know. Never to hate anyone in that situation, in that case, Rabbi Sai. Now, let us move on, Rabbi Sai. Let us move on. Now, um, I want to ask the Olam, and I think this applies to certain people here. What happens if a person right now is sitting here and he's thinking and he said, you know, there's someone that I really hate. I really hate him. And it's very nice listening to the Shea. And it's very nice giving me the Musa. Every guy's like nodding, like I've got that guy. It's very nice. But what do I do about it? I, I don't want to hate him. Nobody here wants to hate somebody else. I don't believe it. And if you did it, it's before you walked into the Shea. Practical. Give me some practical answers. What do I do? So who talks about this? The Heilige Orochai Makadosh. The Orochai Makadosh talks all about this. Yeah. And he says a very big insight. He says two things. Listen carefully. The boy said there's a very important a, a, a course of action. He says, number one, start judging him favorably. And that is the Yisrael we said all the beginning of the whole series. When you don't have schos, everything else falls into place. When you start judging people favorably, judge the guy that you don't like favorably, it will take time. It's not going to be easy. I'm not saying, boom, you judge favorably. Ah, come on, Link. I love him. Give me a hug. No, not necessarily. It might take time. It might take a lot of effort. But eventually you're on the right path to getting there. Okay. That's why you have to start somewhere by judging favorably. That's number one. The Rahim Kadosh says another one. And he brings down, actually this is brought down in the Chikre Leid Shuvahs, near Odeya Simapay, that he says, what you should do is be nice Ba'al. Share his struggles. In other words, if he's going through something, help him out. Listen to him. You know, basically be involved. Automatically that's going to help you deal with him. And the last example over here, which brought down the Sefer Derech Eretz Zuta in Perik Base, he says an interesting thing. Ready? And this is going to separate the men from the boys. This is going to separate the men from the boys. You hate someone, so eight's the number one, don't judge him favorably. Eight's the number two, share his pain. You know, be no so over Number three, daven for his success. Daven that he should be successful, whether it's in yeshiva, whether it's in business, whether it's in his marriage, whether it's bringing up okay. children, whether it's in whatever it is, because it's, you know, it's going to remove the hatred from your heart. Because when you start davening for someone, be-emes, be-emes, and you really daven and you want him to succeed, slowly and sure. No, 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 no. So you have to work on it. I'm not saying again. It doesn't happen with the click of a finger. You hate the guy, and then Mincha today, you're going to be crying your eyes out, hoping that he does a good business deal and makes $5 billion. Okay, that's not going to happen so quickly. But it slowly, not surely, peels away the layers of hatred in your heart. And that's why it's important. Okay? It's very, very important. But both, I want to finish off the series, not the series, but today's halacha, with a few halachas that I want to mention. And that is as follows. So, both, I listen to this very, very important Halacha. It's a Gemara, it's a Chazal, and we spoke about this before we started Shir as well. So I think it ties in very nicely. There's a Gemara in Shabbos, Tafkofi Tesama base. The Gemara in Shabbos tells us that since the day that the, the Beis Hamidrash was destroyed, the Rabboni Shalom only has his Dalit Amas Shel Halacha. The Gemara in Brachas Tafhei refers to, says that the Gemara is referring to Tamid HaChachomim and Sadiqim. As the Rambam explains in Perishat Mishnayis, that is who the Shechina rests on. And therefore, Lemaisa, what we have to learn is to reinforce our wonderful respect for Tamide Chachomim. Because it was through the Tamide Chachomim that we have nowadays the Shechina, because there's no Beis HaMikdosh. Beis HaMikdosh is no longer with us. Hashem, this afternoon, we hope it's going to come down. But until that stage, we have what? Says the Gemara Dalad Amashal Halacha, the Gemara tells us it means Tamid Chachomim. Because that, the Rambam says, where the Shkhinah goes down to. Which means all we have is Tamid Chachomim. That's what the Shkhinah is. We have to respect our Tamid Chachomim. To respect your Rav is something that's so Right? I'll give you an example. 
um, if you have children, we mentioned this also, if you have children and your children are in the shul and you come back from shul and all you do when you come back from the Rav's drosha on the Shabbos afternoon is basically rip apart the rabbi's drosha, he doesn't know what he's talking about, he has no idea. He, do you know what your kids are going to pick up? They've got great antennas. They're going to pick up that the Rav has no idea what he's talking about. No respect for Rabbonim, for Gedolim, for Tzadikim. And who knows where your son is going to end, Rahman al-Itzlan, in such a situation. We have to learn to try and be able to love people, right? The Halig was, was was the shining example of loving his fellow <coughs> Jew. Amazing, amazing thing to love your fellow Jew. And he loved everyone. And he respected everyone. And he was Malamat Schus for everyone, right? Who was more Malamat Schus than the Halig Abadichiva? When Levi Yitzchak was Malamat Schus on all of Kral Yisrael, he would see someone doing something wrong. Nebuch, he needs it. Nebuch, he's going through a hard stage. There was never a situation where he hated someone because he couldn't hate another Yid. How do you hate a Yid? The Rabbi Nishalayim created him. So the Gemara talks about this. When you disgrace a person, you are disgracing Kaviyachal, if we can say the words, the Rabbi Nishalayim, Chas Why? Because the Rabbi Nishalayim created him. And the Rabbi Nishalayim felt that he needed to be in the world. And you decided that he's horrible and he's disgusting and therefore I'm going to hate him. If, again, if we can say the words, you're hating the Rabbi Nishalayim, Chas V'Shalom. Because the Rabbi Nishalayim created him. What gives you the right to hate him? You can hate his actions, that's fine. You're allowed to hate his actions. Oh, he has Bechira. You're right, he chose those actions. But you don't hate him as a person. And therefore, that is true. And that is true. He did choose them and he may have chose wrong. That is true. But don't hate him. He's going through a hard time. You don't know how he grew up. You don't know what situations and challenges he's going through every moment of the day. You don't know what he saw in his life. You don't know what examples he never had in his life. And it doesn't justify doing wrong. It doesn't justify doing... I know I've hit a hard nerve over here. It's a very sore topic and people are very... It's fine. But Rabbi Say, you cannot hate another Yid because another Yid is the Shechina. Another Yid is a Chelek al Kamimal. Another Yid has an Ashama, which is beautiful that the Rabbi Shem sent down to the world. We don't have a right to hate somebody else. Doesn't mean we have to justify or agree with his actions. His actions could be wrong and they may be often, often are. But separate the man from the actions. As, as, as um, Menachem just said, if he would have chosen other actions, we wouldn't have hated him. So it means you're hating the actions, not the person anyway. It's so important. I say work on this. People live their whole lives with hate with other people. They hate their bosses. They hate their mother-in-law. They hate their brother-in-law. They hate all sorts of people. And it's such a shame because they live with a horrible life. They live with the guilt. They live with this horrible... What do you need it for? Learn to love people. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go around hugging everyone, kissing everyone. That's also good. But learn to accept, learn to love, and understand people have their difficulties, people make wrong judgments, people make wrong decisions. But Rabbi Sai, that's our no. job. Don't hate a fellow Yid. Love him. Tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem, we start a new sugar.